All right, the U.S. and German leaders are moments away from addressing uh, the press here. Uh, we've got Robin uh, Simcox of the Heritage Foundation, Margaret Thatcher Senior Fellow, Stephen Sokol, the American Council on Germany President. Stephen, what do you think uh, of this relationship? It comes only days after the French president, you know, was wowing this country. There seems to be a special bond there between uh, he and President Trump. Not so much with the German leader, but I might be missing something. What do you think? Well, there's a little bit of coolness between um, uh, Chancellor Merkel and President Trump that's obvious, but I, I think one, one shouldn't read too much into the optics of the, the bromance of uh, Macron and Trump that we saw at the beginning of the week because they're very different characters. Um, Macron and, and Trump, of course, uh, have a business background. Uh, they're, they're, in a sense, um, new kids on the block as, as heads of state in their respective countries. Uh, Merkel, the, the elder statesman, if you will, not elder, but um, she's been in office for a very long time, for 12 years at this point, and uh, she's looking ahead at, at her next term. As your last guest said, you know, she, she did uh, have a hard time forming her coalition government, but the right. coalition is, is in place now. And, and, it took uh, her long enough, didn't it? It, it took, it took yeah. Germany a very long time, and there, were some, uh, there was a, a little bit of angst, if you will, uh, in Germany about the amount of time that it took to, to form the government, but the, the new grand coalition is in place. And uh, I think it, it speaks well of the, the German government that many of the ministers have been making trips to the United States, but, but around the world since the government has been formed. And it's, uh, it's, it's a good sign that Merkel is here in the U.S. having this meeting with Trump at this point in time. You know, Robin, I got a, a sense reading from some of the foreign press and whether they're, they're, they're stunned. Uh, at, at the success that Donald Trump has had, uh, for, for whom they had little regard, uh, if you think about it, uh, mocked him in his first European tour last year, uh, that he has gotten to this eventual one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the North Korean leader, and then today the North and South Korean leader, uh, doing a lot of hugging and handshaking and all of that, uh, and surprised as well that China might be on the verge of capitulating on at least some of the tariff stuff that the president has brought up and threatened. What do you make of that? Well, it's true. The European press seems to have a very low opinion of President Trump. And, you know, it reminds me exactly of the sort of treatment that President George W. Bush got from the European press. They were very withering about him, um, always looking to denigrate any sense of achievement from the Bush administration. In comparison, the Obama administration could virtually do no wrong. I mean, President Obama was treated like a rock star from day one through to the day left in Europe, yet essentially didn't really have the policy achievements to back it up. So I think that's why we need to look at the substance of what's happening rather than just kind of how the, the press interpret these things. You know, uh, Stephen, we were mentioning a little earlier that Germany is very leery of, of the president just abandoning the whole Iran deal, equally leery and concerned about lumping Europe in with these uh, uh, fines and tariffs on steel, aluminum, what have you. I'm, I'm sure she is presenting that case, as did Emmanuel Macron, but is, what's your sense of how the president might be reacting? So I, I agree. I mean, obviously, uh, the Iran deal is, is high on the agenda for these meetings um, while Merkel is in town, and, of course, to talk about trade, to talk about particularly the aluminum and steel tariffs. And I think one thing that's very important to mention is that both um, Merkel and Macron come here as you know, French and, and German respectively, but also as Europeans. And they have a European position uh, that they've been trying to push with the president. How the president is reacting, um, this is something that we'll have to sort of be digesting over the course of the next few days uh, as we see the results of these meetings. He's already uh, been somewhat dismissive um, of some of uh, Macron's overtures when it comes to the uh, Iran agreement. Uh, and um, so that's obviously something that, that we're going to have to see whether Merkel is able to, to push that agenda forward at all. You know, I get a sense, Robin, that his new best bud in Europe isn't Germany, though. It is, it's quite clearly uh, Macron. Yeah, I think there's, there's no doubt there's a greater kinship between Trump and Macron than there is between Trump and Merkel. And, and I think that's not just because of the the personality side of things, where there clearly is a great uh, a con connection between between uh, Trump and Macron than with Merkel, but also in terms of the policy side of things. I mean, Trump and Merkel are miles apart on uh, NATO, on how to deal with Syrian refugee crisis, 
on tariffs, on the Iran deal, of course. And this has been a real readjustment period for Germany because they were used to having a very close uh, relationship with the Obama administration and essentially saw the world the same way. So they're now having to deal with a very different president. And it's not a real surprise that there's some bumps right. on the road in trying to work out a new relationship. All right. Guys, thank you very, very much. Uh,